In this quick video tutorial, you'll learn how to edit and customize the pre-quiz DDS in Bucket 2.0. So I'm at the dashboard. I'm just going to go up here to Templates. From here, I'm going to scroll down to locate the pre-quiz DDS template right here. There is an option to preview this, so you can click this orange button and you can kind of click through as a participant so you can see exactly what this flow is going to look like. But if you know that you're going to use this one, you just hit this button down here and then hit select and customize. So this is opened up to the canvas. So this is the section where we're going to do things like uh, make any changes to the flow and the layout. So it is recommended that you kind of stick with this. This is a very basic survey, starting with a pre-quiz page, which is basically once your participant clicks the link, this is the page that will open up. So we'll have just maybe a background image, a short descriptor there. And then there's just one question, which we call the single most important question. So it's kind of generic and it's very easy for you to edit, but I'll get to that in a second. And then quiz results. So basically in this particular flow, all participants are flowing through just one mapping bucket or quiz result. And then you have your lead capture. It's just a basic form that asks for their name, their email address, and then you can get their phone number, which is optional as well. And again, we've set up this template so that you just need to make minor changes to it in order to be able to use this and get this going. And then your post quiz page, which is basically just your outcome page where your participant is ultimately going to land or end up on this flow, letting them know what they can expect for the next steps. So from here, I'm just going to scroll in a little bit and focus on this pre quiz page. So I'm going to click edit and now we're going to go into the builder. So the builder is the section where we do things like change out the background image. Maybe we want to change the color of this button. You will need to change out the links down here in the footer. So I'll explain how to do all of that. But starting here, I'm going to show you how to change out the background image. So everything on these different pages are built with various components. So the components are over here where there's this plus sign. You can see the layout organization, the basic components like text boxes, links, quiz buttons, all of that. The good thing, again, using this template, this is all already added on for you. So there's not really much you need to do in terms of changing this layout organization if you're happy with the way this, that this looks. So all I'm going to do is click anywhere in this background image. What I'm looking for is this row to be highlighted and this blue box to be around this whole section. So that's going to let me know that I'm about to change the background image. So once that's clicked, you're going to want to go up here to these tools where it's properties. Click that. So this is where you're going to do all the things like, again, swapping out the background image, changing any colors, if you want to mess with the alignment at all. So I invite you to kind of take your time and go through this to get familiar with everything that the properties has because you will likely spend some time in here sort of making the customizations that you need to. And please note that everything that you see on this page in 2.0 is highly customizable. So you literally can change anything you want. Margins, padding, all of that can all be done over here. So I'm just going to scroll down and I'm looking to find the header that says background image, which is right here. Something else that's important to note, you do want to go ahead and edit this layer one that's here. If you just go in and add an image on top of this, you won't see it because you're actually putting it in layer two. So that's very important to note. So just go here, click this X right there, and I've just deleted the image that is there. It is also important to note if you're using like that template image, that's not saved anywhere. So once you delete that, there's really no way to get it back unless you start from the beginning again and just build a new one from this template. So once that image is gone, I'm going to hit this plus button. And now you can see background image. It gives you the option to add another image here. So I'm just going to click that. And once you've started building funnels in bucket 2.0, it's going to actually save all of the images that you're using. So you can certainly click here to upload something from your desktop or somewhere else. But just note that as you start building a collection of different images, they're all going to be stored. And with each build that you do, they're going to follow you in this little library. So I'm just going to select this guy right here. I'm going to click this. 
and I can tell that it's highlighted blue, so that is the one that's selected. And then I'm gonna go down to confirm, and you can see that it fills in right back there. So then maybe something else you wanna change, you don't like this color of the get started button. All you need to do is make sure that you are highlighting the button and the label will indicate that you are. And then you can see over here, I'm still in properties. And now this background color has updated to that orange color that it is. So all you have to do, if you have your hex code, you can delete what's here up to the hashtag and just paste it in or type in your hex code. Otherwise you can click this orange button and you have this color selector here. You can slide this up and down. You can pick whatever you want. I'll just do kind of a dark gray. And then you just simply click in here and you're done with that. So perhaps you wanted to edit some of this text. I will let you know on this welcome page or the pre-quiz page, you really don't need to edit much here because we've kind of um, made this text sort of work for everybody that's in this position with your pre-quiz DDS. If you did need to, however, you're just gonna double click and then you highlight your text and you just delete that and go ahead and make the changes that you need. If you wanna style this text in any way, just make sure that it's highlighted. You can bold things if you want. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, my background color switched on me. Sorry about that. There you go. Um, you just double click in here. Your editor is gonna pop up and you can kind of make any changes that you need to in terms of font, font size, if you wanna change the justification, center, left, right, all of that. So one other thing that I'm gonna to touch on here are these footer links. So that is something that's going to have to be edited. So all you need to do is down here, just make sure that the box that you have selected does say link and you know you're in the right spot. You're gonna to wanna to go up here and I'm still in properties. You'll just enter the text here. So this is for privacy policy. And then you'll grab your link and you'll just paste it in here. So this just kind of defaults to a Google link to kind of let you know that this is where you put your link. And then you'll want to pick if you want your link to populate in this window or if you want to populate in a new window. So make sure you make your selection there and then you just click out of it and you're done. Move on to terms and service again, just make sure that the box is highlighted, it says link, you're gonna click that. Um, terms of service here, and then just make sure you're adding your link right there. So pretty easy to do there. So once I'm kind of done making my customizations to my pre-quiz page, I'm gonna click Canvas in the upper right-hand corner so that I can go back to this section and keep working through and make the changes that I need. So I'm gonna scroll in to question one. There are a couple ways that you can edit this. You can click here, this pencil, to edit, but I'm gonna go ahead and edit in the builder. So I'm just hovering over the question and I find this pencil with the pad. I'm gonna click that. And now you're able to make your changes to the question. So all you need to do is double click your box highlights. And then we've made it even so easy for you that we basically just put this in brackets and bold. So the question is, when it comes to X, Y, and Z, insert your topic here, What's your single biggest challenge? Very, very straightforward. So all I'm gonna do here is just delete this. And maybe mine is reaching your health and fitness goals. What's your biggest challenge? And then the subline below just says, please be as detailed and specific as possible. That's great, we want that. So over here, you've got your question properties. So you can use images if you want, you can indicate how many rows you want, make it a required question or not. You wanna make this your single most important question, sure. And then over here, you have your pop-up questions above this. So this is basically gonna let you um, kind of dictate if you want a box shadow, what color do you want the shadow to be? Your progress bar is going to be orange. If you wanna change that, again, just select down here or put in your hex code. Just X out of that to move that. Same thing with button colors. You can change that right here. I'm just gonna keep this nice and simple and go with some grays. It's not quite the same color, but that's okay. You can go back and make all of these changes that you want. So if you wanna use a back button or you don't, again, all of this is so highly customizable. And once you've clicked in here and have this highlighted, 
just note that you can style this any way you want. You can use emojis, you can make this all bold. Again, you can change the size and the font family. So it's quite easy to do. So then to get out of here, to go back to the canvas, you just click canvas and we're gonna move right along. Quiz results, there's not really much you need to do in this section, just because for this pre-quiz DDS, we're kind of sending everybody on the same path. We're keeping this very, very simple. This is likely your first um, survey or funnel in 2.0, so you can just go ahead and leave that. As you can see, the label is all DDS respondents. If you wanna change that, you just click this little pencil. You can change that as you need. And then you can also see here that each component is linked up with this little gray, these tabs and these lines. Just make sure that those are all still connected. If you happen to add a new question um, or change this basic flow in any way, and all you need to do for that is under components, you just grab your section, your component, uh, the question, the pre-quiz page, whatever you choose, and you just drop it onto the canvas. But again, I'm gonna encourage you to just follow this simple template and kind of stick with this flow, but just note, that you do have to have all of these connections made because 2.0 doesn't just assume the flow of your funnel, you actually have to make the connections on each side. And that's what this warning indicator is for up here. Right now, everything is connected and it's correct, so we have zero warnings, but if that were not the case, these would be red. I have two warnings because there's two sections that need to be connected, and I'm just gonna grab that and drag it over and I'm back to zero warnings. So moving on from the quiz results, now we're at the basic lead capture. There's just gonna be one lead capture because there's just one bucket that everybody's falling into. So all you need to do for that, I'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. You just click edit. So it just says last step, what's your best contact info to notify you when your quiz feedback has been incorporated? So again, we set this up to, um, to be sort of easily usable for all customers. There's not really much you have to do here in terms of customization. However, if you wanted to, again, you just click in the box, go ahead and make the changes that you see fit. But we're just asking for the name, email address, and then the phone number. And again, this is optional, the phone number. It just says if you're open to chatting about your answer, please enter your phone number below. If there's any section that you don't wanna use, just make sure that that section is highlighted. You're gonna find the trash can and simply hit that and it'll be removed. Again, you wanna change this button color to keep things kind of uniform, just make sure that you're highlighted over it. Go to properties, I'm gonna look for that orange color right here under background color. Just go back to a gray. And that's all you need to do for the lead capture page. Now I'm gonna click canvas again to go back to this general flow. We have one section left and then we're ready to publish. So now we have the post quiz page. This is like an outcome page. This is basically where you're gonna part, where your participant is gonna end up in your survey. So all I'm gonna do is click edit. And again, you're gonna see that this looks very similar to your pre-quiz page in terms of how you set it up. We've got this background image here. We have this footer in here with links again. So all you need to do, click that, make sure the row is highlighted. Go to properties, I'm gonna scroll down. Background image, I'm gonna just click this, go to images, keep things kind of consistent, and there it's swapped out. And then you would wanna go back again and edit all these links because just because you did it in the pre-quiz page doesn't mean that that's following you over to the post-quiz page. So that is important to know that these all have to be swapped out each time for each different component because they're not really interconnected in that way. So you just hover over the link, we're already in properties, scroll up to the top, enter the text there, enter your link, and then select how you want it to show up. I'm gonna go back to Canvas. So once we've worked through all of these different sections and everything is set the way that you want, you are ready to publish. And also note too, you can always preview what you're doing in the upper right hand corner, this gray button that says preview. You can click that at any time. One other thing I failed to mention is that while you're in the Canvas in the Builder, your changes are being saved just about every two seconds while you're working. So there is no save button. You just wanna make sure that this is updating for you so that you know that everything you're doing is being saved in the system. So I'm ready to publish. I'm gonna go up to the upper right-hand corner. I'm just gonna click this button. So it gives you a little warning. You just wanna make sure um, you know, you're almost ready to go. 
Are there any other changes you need to make? So this would be a good time if you want to, you can always send this preview link to a family member, a coworker, a friend as well, if you want them to take a look at it, just to make sure you didn't miss anything. But you're just gonna go to this um, drop down for selecting a domain. These are, the do these are the domains that you get to choose from. I'll just go with bucket forms. And then when you're ready to go, you just hit publish funnel right here. And you can copy your link and send it on its way. And that concludes the training on how to use the pre-quiz DDS template in Bucket 2.0.